the US is becoming a nation of renters and we need to do something right now. So there's two important things that I wanna to talk to you guys about in this video. The first thing is between 2016 and 2021, in a five year period, the number of households that made 150K a year nearly doubled. Those households, increased by 87%. As of today, we have nearly 3 million households that are renting that make over 150K a year. At the same time, we have big corporations like Blackstone buying up real estate like it's nothing, especially rental housing. So I'm gonna break these two things down and explain why we cannot let this happen. So if you've been watching the, my channel, you know that I'm a big proponent of real estate. Over the long term, real estate always goes up. It's a tangible asset. It's very limited to how much real estate and land we have in the world. So it's a great investment. Now, the biggest increase in these households was in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas increased 154%. So the number of households making 150K a year increased 154%. Now, this is a double whammy, okay? There's two things that are happening at the same time, which we don't want. Number one, you have someone renting instead of owning, which means these corporations will continue to buy up rental housing. So taking the control away from average Americans. When you are renting and you're paying your landlord rent, you're paying their mortgage. You're not getting any benefit. That money goes straight down the drain. You don't get the tax benefits of being a homeowner. And number two, you're taking a piece of housing away from someone who has a lower income. Someone who can't afford to buy a house has to rent and you're taking one unit away. If you're making 150K a year, you should be able to save enough money and buy a place. When I re read this article from the Wall Street Journal, some of the responses from people who are renting shocked me. Let me share a couple things with you so we can so we can see what's going on. We have Miss Jessica Bronner here, owns a flooring business in Richmond, Virginia, and she thinks it's a bad time to buy a house. So I don't know if there's ever been a time in history where it's bad to buy a house Real estate always goes up, always appreciates over a long period. So simple reason like it's not a good time to buy is a terrible excuse not to buy a home. Maybe because rents are high. If we move forward a little bit, another person, Al Hughes, who's renting in San Antonio, again, making 150K a year, uh, doesn't want, he wants a backyard, but he doesn't want to necessarily have to take care of it all the time. And he doesn't have an interest in buying anymore. People, these are lousy reasons not to buy real estate. I'm just gonna flat out say, it. you don't wanna take care of your backyard? Well, instead of renting somewhere and paying a shitload of money for rent, you can pay a landscaper 100 bucks a month or 150 bucks, so you don't have to take care of your backyard. At the same time, you're gonna get interest rate, uh, you're gonna get, you're gonna be able to write off your mortgage interest. You're gonna get the appreciation. Uh, buying a house and paying a mortgage is a forced savings account. Every month you're paying down the principal of your loan. It's basically like a piggy bank that you'll be able to cash out of sometime down the road. So again, can't stress the importance of owning real estate. So these are some of the reasons people are not, are not buying. A couple other reasons are they have too much debt, they have poor credit, they don't have enough savings, and they like living a posh lifestyle. A lot of these new developments are catering to people making a lot of money. They have nice pools, lounges, and amenities that are attracting these people. So these renters are like, well, I can rent somewhere and have all these nice amenities versus owning. It's all a trap. You do not want to go down that road because you'll be a renter for life, never building wealth through real estate. Now, on the flip side, you have corporations like Blackstone, okay? Now listen to these to these stats. This is gonna blow your mind, okay? They have a $30 billion fund and they're aggressively buying up 
real estate, okay? So let me break this down for you guys. So Blackstone, as of right now, 80% of their investments are in industrial, rental housing, data centers, life sciences, and hotels. So we know what industrial is. We know rental housing. Data centers are centers where, you know, all the cloud computing, all your Google Drive, you know, they have all of these these cloud components have to be stored somewhere in these data centers, life sciences and hotels. Okay, so 80% of their investments are in these sectors. Okay. If we go back, okay, to 2007, Blackstone only had 3% of their money invested in these sectors. They went from 3% to 80% from 2007 to today. That's insane. And if we continue on this path where we have people like Al Hughes and Jessica Bronner who are like, I'm not going to buy a house. It's just not the right time. I don't want to take care of my backyard. Guys, we're, we're setting ourselves up for disaster. We're setting ourselves up to be a nation of renters. We do not want this. We do not want to have to put our biggest monthly expense in the hands of big corporations, which is exactly what we're doing. As of the end of 2022, Blackstone had three hundred twenty six billion dollars worth of real estate okay this is just insane and we just can't continue to let this happen we need to start buying homes owning our homes maybe having an investment property but at the very least buy the home that you live in okay now another reason blackstone is doing this is because sellers are getting more desperate it's hard to get a loan as we saw at the last fed meeting banks are shutting down banks are going out of business so what's going to happen is the banks that are still left standing have to tighten up their credit conditions they're not just going to give loans to anyone it's going to be hard to get a new loan and this is something that you may not have known but if you own a commercial property let's say an apartment building if you own a 10 or 20 unit apartment building you they only will give you a five-year loan that means you have to get a new loan in five years So that means if you last refinance or you bought your commercial property in 2019 or 2020, that loan is going to become due. You have to get another loan. So if you had an interest rate of 4% as of right now or in the next year, you're going to be looking at a rate of 6%. You might be strapped for cash. You might be losing money on your investment. And guess who's going to come in and scoop up that property at a discount? Blackstone. Blackstone's going to come in with their huge funds and they're going to start buying up these properties from sellers who are strapped for cash because they can't get another loan. Or even if they can get another loan, they're going to have to have a higher interest rate and they're going to, now they're going to be losing money on their investments. Another interesting stat from Blackstone directly, as of in 2007, uh, their investment portfolio, 61% of their investments was in offices, office real estate in 2007. They started unloading that. They're all the way down to 2% of their portfolio is office buildings. Office buildings are dying. Everyone's working remote. The only sector in the office building space that's doing well is very high end office buildings. But again, they went from 61% of their portfolio to 2%. So if we look at these really huge corporations like Blackstone that are worth hundreds of billions, half a trillion, a trillion dollars in valuation. Let's look at what they're doing. They're buying residential housing. They're buying industrial. So we should take a page from their book, put a stop to this, buy what they're buying because they obviously are smart. They know what they're doing and we do not want to go down this path. We do not want to be a nation of renters. If you are ever in a position where you want to buy a home, you can always send me an email below. Happy to help you out. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.